Joshua chapter 6, verse 2, and we welcome all the people on the internet today to join with us, and we hope that you can receive and yield something out of this lesson. Today we're talking about two things, soak it up and strategy to win. Say soak it up. Soak it up like you mean it. Soak it up. Strategy to win. And our verse is from chapter, uh, uh, our text is from Joshua chapter 6, verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, that's all. The Lord said to Joshua, I want you to remember those words. The Lord said to Joshua. And then the second uh, passage we want to use our text is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And I'll read it real quick. It just says quickly, For the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for fully pulling down strongholds. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about God's atomic bomb, God's atomic power. Remember, we've been sharing on that. And in reality, and from the history of the atomic bomb, it means a power above and beyond all other powers. Would that qualify as an atomic power? Oh, yeah. the, the power of God. It's above, it's above everything else. There's nothing that can stand against the power of God. It's like walking into a dark room and switching on the light. Darkness does not argue with that light. It has to go. And it's the same thing. And so when we're talking about this power, this atomic power, we're talking about a power that's above, above all other powers. We talked about a God's atomic bomb, the first lesson we talked about, and that was the blood of Jesus. Do you remember? Amen. A couple lessons ago, the blood of Jesus, the power of the blood of Jesus. And how a lot of the churches have stopped putting that in their songbooks. They want to talk about it. It's offensive. It's crude. No, it's not. It's the blood of Jesus. Amen. We just had the blood of Jesus in our communion. Then we talked about the second atomic bomb, the name of Jesus. It's a name above all names in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. It's powerful. Yeah. And we, are we have authority to use that name. Yeah. And you need to use that name. But you have the authority to speak to the situation in the name of Jesus. And be careful how you word that. You say, well, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. Because I see a lot of people who aren't being set free. They're not receiving from God. And so God, when God sets up a rule, he sets up a plan, he expects us to follow. And that's why I've been sharing with this with you, and it's been changing my own thinking on prayer. And today we're going to talk about his third atomic bomb, and I believe this is so extremely important. It's called the strategy to win. I, 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 I'm sorry, and I apologize, but I'm challenged by the word of God. You, you may not be. I know a lot of Christians that are just in limbo about this. They just, whatever. I just don't feel that way. I don't know why I'm this way. Why don't I just forget it? Just go on with life and be happy. But I'm challenged because the Word of God tells me there's things that I can do. Amen. Am I the only one who feels that way? Something. I, I, I want to do it. If the, if the Bible says I can do it, I want to do it. And if I can't do it, I want to know why I can't do it. I deal with people who are sick all the time. I get phone calls all the time of people who are sick. They call off the internet. They call on all kinds of situations. I'm challenged. If Jesus said he's a healer, then he's a healer. I, I just, that's just the way I feel. He said I can do all things. He said my weapons are mighty through God. He said I'm more than a conqueror. He said if God is for you, who is against us? We're talking, we're talking about strategy today. And there isn't anybody in the world, there isn't any general in the world that would go into war and not have strategy. You see, we talk so many times about all this power of God and all, you know, God has given this and God has done that. But the bottom line is the strategy. When the general goes to war, they, got, they sit down they sit down with their generals and they have a strategy. They work, they work out a strategy. Well, how are we going to do this? In the Second World War, uh, when I was a young kid, I remember listening to them talking about different strategies. And I remember General Patton was talking about a strategy when they came into Sicily. And the, and the strategy was, and I've watched it now on the video, they, they, didn't, just, they didn't just go in. It's, it's sort of like a lot of Christians. I have all this power. I got up. But they have no strategy. I believe there's a strategy. And I believe that was one of the things we're lacking. The Lord put this in my heart. He says, God, give us a strategy. 
Uh, let, let, me, let, me, let me just rephrase it like this. You're on a boat in a vicious storm. And the boat is about ready to capsize. Fear is gripping everyone. The captain is fearful. Everybody. And the thought is, are we going to make it? While you're on that boat, an angel comes to you and tells you that you're going to reach your destination without any problems. Don't fear. Everybody on the boat is going to be safe. What would your reaction be? What would your reaction be? Peace. I'm going to make it. As an angel came down and talked to me. I'm not fearful. This is called strategy. This is, what, this is why he said, and God said to Joshua, and then he gave him what? Strategy. He didn't tell him, Joshua, you got all power and everything. He told him that. But he also gave him a strategy to win that war. And I contend today that we need God's strategy. One thing that happened this morning is just interesting. That song that we sang, that we had never sang before, I was sitting upstairs in prayer. And the Lord said, open up the skies. What are you talking about? Open up the skies. And I came down and looked in, and sure enough, there's a song, open up the skies. The Lord said, you to sing that. I'm going to bring down, I'm going to bring down the glory on the people this morning when you sing that. And I said, okay, God, we're going to sing that song. That song, the other song that we sang that uh, Tony, I don't know what happened to the tape, whatever happened to the tape. And I got that off the internet yesterday, and I heard it on the internet yesterday, and I heard Michael, is it Michael Smith, is it Michael Smith, the singer, singing it. And I thought, that's what, that, that, that's, that's what we need to hear. That's what we need to hear today. That's what I call a strategy. God was given a strategy. He wants to see something happen in this service. He wants to see something. He don't want you to leave again. Well, that was interesting. I'm slowly understanding that God has told me I can do it. I can overcome. But without, without a strategy to overcome, I really don't know how to do it. You got all this power. You got all this power. You got all the Holy Spirit. You got all the power you want. You got atomic power in you. But you don't know what strategy that God wants to use. It was up. If it was up to you and I, then we could boast. See what I've done? But the Bible says exactly opposite. This is why it's important to have a strategy. This is why it's important is to take time and get a strategy. The Bible says not a works so lest anyone boast. He wants to tell you what to do, and he wants you to obey it. He wants to tell you where to go, and he wants you to obey it. Today, we want to look at four battles, four strategies, and four victories. And my question is, how were these men able to see such a victory? How were they able to see such a victory? And we go back in the Bible, and I'm just going to touch briefly on each of them, and then we're going to go on. In Exodus chapter 3, this is what it says to Moses. This is, what, this is what happened to Moses. Now, I don't have to go through the story of Moses. You've heard the story. It says in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, And the Lord said to Moses, In other words, what was happening, God was giving him a strategy. And the Lord said to Moses, This is what I want you to do. And Moses had all different kind of ideas. And God said, No, this is what I want you to do. In Joshua, chapter 5, verse 13, it says, The commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Now don't tell me we don't need to hear from God. Well, we got the word of God. No, you got the word of God, but you need to hear a word. Yes. Yes. You need to hear a word from this word or from the Spirit of God into your heart. In Judges, it says, And the Lord turned to Gideon and said, No wonder these people weren't successful. They were hearing from the man himself. No wonder they were able to turn a nation around and set a nation free. They heard from God. Do you think God wants to set America free? Do you think God wants to bring a revival to America? I believe God is up there saying, is there anybody in the world who will listen to me and do what I say? <laughs> Second Samuel, it says, and the Lord said to David, David was saying, making a decision, decision, shall we go down and fight the Philistines or shall we stay here? And it says, the Lord said to David. And, the, and in, in Judges chapter 6, it says, and the Lord turned to Gideon and said, the Lord turned to Gideon and said, I want you to get that. Four men, four battles, four victories. How did it come about? They heard from God. They had a strategy. They were walking down the street. Boy, I got all power in the world. I'm anointed with the Holy Spirit. I can speak in tongues. Wow, wow, wow. That's great. 